Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 4, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so sorry this video is up a bit later than usual. I didn't have my laptop with me, so I am back. I've got my stuff. We're going to be breaking down this episode. So Episode 4 was very top-heavy. In that most of the stuff in the first part and like the middle of the episode really didn't matter that much apart from you know some of the malefic stuff but then towards the end of the episode we got these big moments these two big reveals actually maybe three big reveals that we're gonna talk about very soon so yeah let's go ahead and talk about it so this episode I was a bit mixed on it I really liked it towards the end but the start and the middle I was like I don't know why they are including a few of these storylines, but we'll get to that. But anyway, so we got Supergirl versus William. This is a thing set up at the start of the episode, and this was with Nia and her friend, who is apparently like a hacker or something. Like she can unencrypt, as they say, even though the real word to use is decrypt. I looked that up just before I said it in this video, but I noticed that when I was watching, I was like, they're saying unencrypt. It's actually decrypt. If something's encrypted, you have to decrypt it. You can't unencrypt a encrypted thing, right? So that's just a, a problem with the dialogue. And I think maybe they were trying to bite too much because, you know, the writers, they don't know about all this stuff. They aren't pro hackers. They aren't people that can sort of understand all this stuff. They are making up the storylines in their heads. So I don't know if this technology stuff is going to go too far. But that's one example of it, you know, of an error, essentially, in this storyline. But that's just a small thing. And so we have this stuff. Kara visits Mexico City in this episode. She speaks Spanish at one point, so maybe Kara can speak all these languages. She spoke French last episode, although it was, like, a really small bit. But, yeah, so she's investigating William. And we get this big revelation towards the end of the episode. And that revelation is that William is, in fact not a real worker at Catco, he is an undercover from the Times in London, so he's undercover for this newspaper, looking into essentially Andrea Rojas and everything to do with that. So that explains, and that's a bit more satisfactory as to why he's been such a prick this whole time. Like, I don't like his character, but I think this is his best moment because he got to fully become something else rather than just a cliche because I felt like he was that cliche, that douchebag that just comes in, ruins everything. So I'm kind of happy that they've gone this way. And just a quick error as well. I'm pretty sure newspapers don't send undercover people. I'm just saying. That's more of like a federal agency or like police thing. That's what I just observed. But anyway, so he's doing that. He tells Kara because Kara found out she gets into his place and so all is revealed and I'm kind of happy where they went because I was sort of not following in the episode like what William was actually doing while he was all over the place but he's obviously getting paid doing these various things you know last episode he got that payment and he's getting this payment probably from his employers in London because you know they have to sneakily pay him. And so, yeah, we got a reference to Intergang in this episode. That's a comic book thing to do with Superman. That was to do with William as well. And so we have Elena Torres and various things like that happen in the episode. We get the now infamous blow car out the window scene, which was a bit better than in the trailer because the trailer that they didn't have like the full sound effects and everything like that. But nevertheless, she goes flying into the air, even though she got pushed forward. So there's just a few errors in this episode that make me question some of the you know technology storyline and some of the show running stuff that they have chosen this season like the showrunners because i feel like we can't ever trust them i know i obviously have a thing against them and i think a lot of you do because they've promised so much and this stuff never happens really so i'm still doubting that win's gonna come back they said last season he's gonna come back then he didn't come back and I don't know, we haven't heard anything or seen anything to do with that, although Jeremy has said he's coming back, they said that last season. Stuff like that, I don't know, I think we need new showrunners if I'm completely honest. Like, I've loved episode 1, 2, and 3, I thought they've been very, very good, 
but then this episode was a bit of a step down, and I think it all comes back really to the showrunners after all. But that's my ranting bit to do with the showrunners out of the way. Now let's move on to talk about Malafaic. So Malafaic attacks, he gets this confrontation with Supergirl and Martian Manhunter towards the start of the episode where Martian Manhunter Jean pretends to be Kelly. So Kelly's a big thing obviously to do with him, sort of more like a gimmick because now she is connected to him. He, she can see him anywhere and she keeps on getting flashes of Alex and she instantly knows that Alex has been you know, kidnapped or taken over by Malafaic. However, I think this is going to come into play with the Lena and Malafaic stuff because she has that connection, she will know, I think she will sense that he's still around and I think this is maybe the way that Lena gets exposed this season to Supergirl, to everyone and maybe this is the big revelation that's bound to happen with Lena being exposed you know, doing all these experiments. Because really she is doing extremely illegal stuff, very villainous, even though she's not like a full-on villain, but she kind of is in a different way. And so let's move on. So Lena does actually help the DEO in this episode, and that is the way that she, in the end, as it's revealed, she captures Malafaic. And so this is going to be her experimenting on Malafaic to use his ability of inception to alter and change people's minds essentially so i'm still not fully on board with this lena stuff like i said on Paige and eric's live stream the other week i think that what they are doing was interesting at first in the first episode but then they've really over complicated it and over explained everything there's just been a lot of exposition and if you don't know what exposition is it's basically telling us what she's gonna do and she's not really done much apart from obviously change eve and yeah i don't know about the storyline but yeah you can tell i'm a bit mixed on this episode but i'll get to the stuff that i'm really excited to talk about that was really great in this episode in just a minute but now let's move on to talk about a thing that i think was the main problem of this episode and i think that was the james and kelly stuff like i like kelly you guys know that but it was so weird it was completely out of nowhere they go back to like their hometown as americans say and it's some random place, I don't know, I don't remember what it's called, but it was a side story where essentially it was obviously for James to be inspired to return by the end of the episode, we'll talk about that in a sec, that was good, but you had this guy, this kid who was like camping out in his house, which was kind of weird, and it was just completely out of the blue, it was completely separate, completely just like out of nowhere, like James helping this little kid, being like, yo, do you want to come around for dinner? And it just felt completely in the wrong episode. Like, it didn't fit, basically. That's what I'm trying to get at. And so I think that was a flaw of the episode. But then it gets good when he leaves there. He goes back to National City and it's his farewell. So James is officially leaving. And I'm, the reason I'm saying it gets good, not because he's leaving. I don't want James to leave. The reason why I think it was good is because it was a very good farewell. It was them all grouped up, they were at a bar, the alien bar, and so James returns to investigating and he is the owner of his hometown's newspaper that we visited earlier in the episode. I think that is a good way for James to go out and I thought the farewell was very touching actually and I really liked it and I'm going to miss James but you know good luck to McCard in the future. He's doing Mortal Kombat right now, which is very cool. Okay, so let's talk about some other stuff. So we have Kara and Lena have this really kind of funny and cute scene where Kara's like, oh, we're going to go out. You know, James is leaving. Well, she doesn't actually say that, but that's what they are there for in the end. But it's just a great scene. Like, I really like that. And obviously it ends with Lena being sort of very mysterious and mischievous because she has obviously taken Malafaic and she hasn't told anyone and we don't know by that point but it's revealed and so yeah that's about it for this video I just wanted to point out how good David Harewood was in this episode I thought he was great and another problem I didn't think Alex was very good in this episode Alex is my favorite character bar Supergirl and Mon-El and 
I felt like they just really didn't know what to do with her this episode. They gave her this really kind of strange scene with, with Jean. That seemed really false, but that was the writing. Like, the writing in this episode was kind of wavy. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Tonight, I will have my trailer breakdown out for episode 5 of season 5, so please be sure to check that out, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.